All right, praise the Lord. We have a lesson today that we feel like that we'll probably be teaching for a while on this. The lesson is concerning prophecy. And the church has a tool that's stronger, more powerful, and there's no human power on earth, including the atomic bombs, that's greater than what the church has, which we know is prophecy. Prophecy is greater than any tool on earth because when God says it will happen, it will happen. And there's no man-made tool that can change it. Including the atom bomb, any of them. Now, we find here, the lesson is, is entitled, Rightly Divided the Word of Truth. And we find here in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, Paul said to Timothy, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <coughs> so we want to look at this, rightly dividing the word of truth. Whenever we read the Bible, we have to rightly divide what's been said. We have to divide who it's been said to, and to what generation it was said, and how it applied. Now, there's things in the Bible that have already come to pass. Things that are being brought to pass right now, and things that will come to pass. So we have to do we have to be able to cipher, as we read the Bible, the difference between what has already happened, what is happening, and what is going to come. These three things has to be clearly understood. That's why the Scripture says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now let's look at Luke. 21st chapter in the 7th verse. And he says, And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Now, in Luke, in the 21st chapter in the 7th verse, they asked him about what was going to happen in the future. They were still alive. He was talking about things that was going to happen. And they wanted to know, when is this going to happen? So he says to them in the 8th verse, And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time dwelleth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Now there's, there's something here that we want to look at before we can go any farther in prophecy. We want to look at who Jesus is talking to and who these things apply to that He's saying. And we find that simply by the word ye and you. Now we know when someone says ye and you, that he's talking to the people that's there right then in his presence in that generation. When he talks and he brings out the word they, he's talking about futurism, things that's going to happen to people that comes in the future. Now let me justify what I'm saying real quick. We know in the days of the apostles, after Jesus was crucified, the Roman Empire, they really clamped down on the whole known nation that they controlled. And we know that there was great persecution that come against the church. Partly because 
uh, part of Rome burnt to the ground and the higher archies blamed the Jews. It was open season to kill them. They brought them into the Roman Colosseum and killed them by the hundreds and the thousands. All kinds of horrible deaths, burning, pulling pieces between animals, lions tearing, ripping them apart, bears, everything you can think of. It was sport. Now today, they act like the Colosseum's a great thing to go over and look at. But they don't stop to realize how many people that have the same hope that you've got today, a hope of Jesus Christ and eternal life, followers of Jesus Christ, died in that very arena. And you know, it's, it's not a place for tourists, it's a tomb. We know that Rome uh, ruled the world for approximately a thousand years. We know that they took all the scrolls and the writings that the Jews had, they translated that writing into a Latin language which was only known by priests. So it was called a dead language because no one else knew how to speak it or understand it. And they burnt all of that literature and so the words of God lay bound in Rome by the Catholicism uh, movement for approximately a thousand years. Then King James in England paid to have the Word of God translated from a Latin language back into an English readable language. He paid the people to translate it that's why the original Bible, I'm talking about the original first Bible, is called the King James Version. Now since then there's been many versions. But the original first one that was interpreted is known as the King James Version. Now now we have a lot of revised versions. And uh, I'm not for revised versions because man has taken the Bible and they've changed the meaning of many things in the Bible. I don't believe it was God's will for the Bible to be changed like that. I believe if you want to understand the Bible, pray and ask God to reveal it to you. Don't get a revised version where someone has changed the truth. Uh, I was talking to a man just last week who was telling me uh, the names of the two thieves that died on the cross. And I told him, the Bible doesn't mention their names of either one of them. Oh, yeah, he said. And he pulls out his Bible. Well, according to his commentaries in the book, they had added different things. Wasn't the original at all. That's what the Bible meant when it said rightly dividing the word of truth. How do you get that truth, Brother Bill? Look at the first of the scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. First of all, you need to be filled with the Spirit of God, baptism of the Holy Ghost, so you're able to have a clear spiritual vision of the word and then you must work studying. And you know, in my case, it's took a lifetime. The Bible tells us if you teach, you wait on your teaching. But I went through this book many, many times, many times. And uh, if it's misquoted, I can tell you instantly. Because I know this book. I'm not boasting except in the Lord. And so... We want to look at Luke 21 and 9. But when ye shall hear wars and commotions, be not terrified, but these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, now he's talking to the apostles about things that are going to come to pass in their 
lifetime. He's referring to those modern apostles when he says, ye and you. We know what those words mean. That's why when we read them, we clearly see who he's talking to. That's why we can say many things in the Bible have been already fulfilled. Many are being fulfilled right now and many others is prophecy to come. In other words, there's many things that's not coming on the church yet. People live afraid when they read these things that they're going to go through them when the early church has already went through them. You've got to rightly divide who God's talking to here. And he says, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famine and pestilence and fearful signs and great signs fearful signs and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all of these, look here, they shall lay their hands on you. He's talking face to face with the disciples. He's not saying them, which would be maybe us. He said, they'll lay hands on you. And he says, and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogue and the, into prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. We know that happened. We know we read about it in the book with Paul and the others. 16th verse, And ye shall be betrayed both by parents, brothers, and kinfolks, and friends, and some of you shall be caused to be put to death. And we know that happened during the great tribulation of the early church. And the book, the Fox Book of Martyrs, the reason it's called the Fox Book is because the man that wrote the book is named Fox. And he uh, gathered materials through his lifetime about the persecution of the church. And I encourage you to get that book called the Fox Book of Martyrs. It tells how the early church were killed and slaughtered and was annihilated and there was no one preaching the truth for approximately a thousand years. Religion was being taught. Christianity was being taught. And they believed in Jesus. But they were not teaching the truth of God's Word. They were teaching the Catholicism version. And everyone followed because they had no choice other than that in religion. And if you even acted like you was anything else, well, they killed you. Just like he said it would happen here. It says in the 13th verse, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Now, the testimony that they had is what we're looking at right now. Their deeds, their life, and the way they faced death is the testimony of them that we're looking at right now. And that's why he said here, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. So we're using their lives as an example. Settle it therefore in whose heart? In your heart. Now look, we know that he's talking to the disciples one on one, not just the twelve, all of the followers that were there. And he says to them, Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you 
a mouth of wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brothers and kinfolk, friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men. Why? Because they were Christians? Because they believed in, in church or religion? Or my name? Yes. What is that name? Jesus. Jesus. He says, because they believed in the name of Jesus, he said, they shall, he said, and you shall be hated for all men, of all men, for my name's sake. So they didn't have a friend among them. Because they wouldn't turn from Christ. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. What he means by this is not the body, the eternal body. Not a, any of the eternal body would perish. He says, in your patience possess ye your souls. Now it's pretty clear who he's talking to. From Luke, 21st chapter, 7th verse, all the way down to the 20th verse. Look at the 20th. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Now, the early apostles saw that. Now, we got people today that's still looking for the desolation of uh, 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 the desolation of, of Israel. Now, I'm not saying that Israel isn't going to face some things yet. But we do know that what the Scripture is telling us happened whenever the Roman Catholicism went into the temples, moved everyone out, and set up their order, their religion, and they controlled from that point from the temples, they control religion. And whenever he said, you shall see Jerusalem the pass with armies, he said, know that your desolation thereof is nigh. And so, the early church went through the persecution, the tribulation of that day. Therefore, we stand firmly to believe that the church will not go through the end time persecution, mark of the beast, tribulation. The church has already been through it. The early church has already been uh, Mars. And they have given us their testimony of what they went through. And instead of us sitting back and worrying about having to go through those things that's already happened, the church today needs to Worship and praise God and thank Him for victory through all of that. That the Bible was retranslated. We all have a choice. And God's got great plans for the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. But now then we look clearly, same chapter, 21st chapter, and the 21st verse. And all of a sudden, the word ye and you changes. And he says, them let them. Them is referring to futurism. Them let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. That was after the tribulation of the day Christ was talking to about with the disciples. He's looking right out and talking to them and he says, then let them, let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain, but woe to them that are with child, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. They, they, not ye, not you, they. And there shall be signs of the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth, 
Distress of nations, perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. When he put in here about futurism, the sea and the waves roaring, that was in there for a reason. He didn't have to put that in there. But I believe that he's letting us know that before he comes back, the uh, snow on the north and, uh, pole and the south pole, uh, there's going to be greater, greater, greater of melting of ice. Therefore, water levels are going to rise, rise, rise. There's going to be great storms come. That will not affect the disciples in that day. But it is going to affect things in our day. He says, uh, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they, here's this word they, see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. And so we know that things are going to come upon this earth. And we know they're going to get worse. We know there'll be a beast kingdom. We know there'll be a tribulation. We know that God's going to pour out His wrath. Yes. But we also know that the church won't be here. God's coming for His people. And the rapture will take place. And we won't go through it because God promised us in His Word that we would not go through it the second time. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. So we believe in rightly dividing the word of truth. Give the Lord a good prayer. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah.